Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. So, have you ever been in a situation where you're talking about like a home equity line of credit with other people and people freak out because it's like, oh my goodness, a 10% interest rate, 10% APR, and they're like, oh my, I would never do that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> because, uh, you know, it's not about the interest rate, it's about how much interest you pay, right? So, again, this is from the same uh, HELOC statement that came out today. 10% oh 764 <laughs> right and what we're focusing on is more about cash flow and maximizing that cash flow rather than just on the interest rate right and so what we're going to do is learn how we can use a 10% line of credit uh, to maximize our cash flow and that's what we always do pretty much every single video with this thing called velocity banking right and so what is velocity banking all it is is a debt payout strategy using a line of credit as your main operating account. Line of credit, right? So this is a, oops, sorry. This is a home equity line of credit at 10%. It's actually $50,000. Uh, but I also have other lines of credit. So I got this 15 grand personal line of credit. Um, I'm not even using it. I probably should use this so the bank doesn't close it at 15%. But I don't fear 10% or 15% interest rates just as long as I can maximize my cash flow. And that's what we're going to do today, right? That's what we're going to do. So in order to do velocity banking, we need two things. We need a budget. So again, this is a debt payoff strategy. Some people like, for some reason, like, what do you do if you don't have debt? And it's like, maybe get some, right? Get a rental house, buy it at a discount and actually cash flow. Unlike most landlords who uh, get excited about the $200 a month cash flow. So we have income right here, six thousand dollars, uh, four thousand dollars of expenses, or forty eight hundred, and we got good savings, thousand over a thousand dollars. In fact, if you have over a thousand dollars of savings, you're better off than the average bear, right? Isn't that what Yogi Bear always says? I'm better than the average bear. Okay, so and then you do an expense breakdown, and then you list every single expense that you have. So we got two credit cards. We got a light student loan here. And we got an auto loan and we have a new mortgage. We're assuming that this is all brand new debt, even though it's kind of unrealistic, right? Um, and then we have our food, gas, insurance, and other stuff. Now, I really like that the student loan is so low, right? 15000 At least it's not like a hundred or $200,000. But what I'm not a big fan of is this $300,000 mortgage. You always want to buy real estate at a discount. Uh, I bought a property at at least a hundred thousand dollar discount, and that's kind of like my next goal: get the next rental property a hundred thousand dollar discount. Um, but you know what? It's still good because it's four percent. But I'm not too much uh, worried about that four percent as much as maximizing this thing called cash flow. So we have our budget, right? And so we're going to use our line of credit as our main operating account in order to maximize our cash flow. And we're going to assume that maybe we have. I don't know, should we use a home equity line of credit or a personal line right here? This is a personal line, 15%, 25000 But if you have a home equity line of credit, because your credit, line of credit, I'm sorry, because you're offering collateral, which is your home equity, they give you lower interest rates and higher rates, right? And so I'm actually applying for 8.5%, um, oh, it rounded, but it's 8.5% uh, home equity line of credit right now. And I was talking to the loan officer and she was like, what's your current rate? And I was like 10. And she was like, you poor thing. And again, she, to me, 8.5, 10, it's, it's almost all the same. Just as long as I had the cash flow, but the loan officer doesn't know what she, you know, she doesn't know what she doesn't know. Right. But if I get 8.5%, that's fantastic. And that's from the credit union because credit unions have the lowest interest rates, uh, when it comes to debt. Right. As far as I'm aware. In fact, I've seen like 18 percent credit cards. I've never seen that before. Even 12 percent. Right. But I'm going to get a 8.5 percent home equity line of credit. And so if it's 10 percent, it's all good, too. We could do 10 percent and we'll say fifty thousand dollars, although we don't. It doesn't have to be fifty thousand dollars, although the, the, the more the limit, the better. Right. Like, you know, get as much as you can because banks don't lend money to people who need it. OK. And so a lot of people see the strategy and they're like, I need money. And like, no, you're not going to get the money <laughs> if you ever go to a bank. All right. So, but let's assume we have a $50,000 home equity line of credit. And what is a home equity line of credit, right? It's all it is, is you're offering your home equity as collateral. And then you can freely draw money whenever you want with the click of website button at a 10% interest rate. And the cool thing is, is that you use it to pay anything. So a credit card is technically a line of credit, but it's got restrictions, right? All right. 
So now let's go ahead and do the line of credit as our main operating account. So we do the velocity banking side of things. So instead of having savings, we just have no savings, right? And in lieu of savings, we have something called cash flow. So the formula is kind of the same. It's uh, income minus expenses, right? And you can see like, oh my goodness, these two numbers look exactly the same. One is savings, one is cash flow. You're just making shuffling numbers. I think that's what Dave Ramsey hates about home equity lines of credit. So you're just shuffling debt. No, 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 no. We're maximizing cash flow, okay? And the way that we maximize cash flow is moving some of our debt and making our line of credit as our main operating account. You see that step two right here? Line of credit as our main operating account. So let's go ahead and move some of this credit card debt here. That's about 15 grand into this home equity line of credit. And we're gonna start off with that. And then what happens just by simply moving these two credit cards, oh my goodness, zero, zero. And we went from 1100 to 1600 in day one. And the actual velocity banking strategy is that paycheck into that line of credit, right? And then the expenses out of the line of credit. That's velocity banking. And so the balance is gonna go down every single month by the 1600. Right, it's really easy, okay? So let's go ahead and do this and calculate the next month's balance, which is the previous month's balance plus the previous month's interest minus the, the cash flow, which is 1678.19, okay? And then we calculate the interest, so let's go ahead and do that with the average daily balance, right? Average daily multiplied by the interest rate, which is 0.1, and then divide by 12. And so now, after every single month, we gotta pay that interest, right? We gotta pay that interest. Okay, and it takes us 10 months to pay all of this, right? And we recover this cash flow, and now we're just going to pay off the debt, the student loan, auto loan, mortgage, okay? So we took care of the, the, the debt that people fear the most, which is credit cards, okay? And how long does it take us? 10 months. 10 months for 15K. So we just write our milestones, 10 months, 15K. Okay, and now, you know, some people get confused. Do I do the student loan? Do I do the auto loan? Do I do the mortgage? Um, which one do you do, right? And the easiest way to figure out which one you do is the by an indicator called the cash flow index. Again, so if we take a look at our cheat sheet loan calculator right here, which is uh, if you have the um, balance, the original balance, interest rate, and loan term, you can auto calculate the payment amount as well as something called the cash flow index. So basically think of this as a ranking system. So you see this 51, it's the lowest one. Also, how do you interpret this? Um, basically, the lower the number, the more cash flow you get by paying off the debt. So if I take a look here, if I pay off this 22,000, I get $430 back. Whereas if I pay off 300,000, I only get $1,400 back. So in terms of like, uh, bang for your buck, it's much better to pay this one off first because you'll get much more in terms of payment than paying off this 300000 okay? So let's take a look here, and we're at 10 months right now, so we can uh, cheat and figure out what the current balance is, right? And then as we can see here, eighteen grand is the um, is the current balance. So what we do here, one of the things we can do is, again, we take this eighteen grand, right? And then we move it to the line of credit, and we just apply the same strategy again, okay? So let's add this 18 grand right here. So 18810.13, right? Just add it to the formula, okay? And by moving that 18 grand, how much do we get in cash flow? Well, we got this $430 back in cash flow, and this is now zero. And what's our cash flow right now? Oh my goodness, over $2,000, right? So within a year, we got $2,000 of cash flow, and then we just gotta do it over and over again. So let's just go ahead and do that. And how, so what's our cash flow right now? It's 2108.65, right? So you see this here, and then you see that right here. Okay, now let's go ahead and focus on that auto loan and do it over and over again. So 19 months, all right, excellent. That was easy. <laughs> 19 months, all right. So now we do 19 months. Uh, all right, and then so 15 plus 22, that's 37K. So less than two years, we paid off, was it two years? No, 
Yeah, less than two years, we paid off 37K. And now we just got to focus on that student loan, student loan and the mortgage, right? So again, it's 19 months have passed. We got our cheat sheet loan calculator, so 19, 19, 19. So if we had done things the average American way, we'd just be paying interest on our debt, but we're applying all our money with to the debt with the help of a line of credit. Oh my goodness, so easy, right? So now we only have 13 grand in this debt, so we can move that, but we only get about $160 of cash flow back, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's go ahead and do this, and we're going to uh, do that right there, and add this 13 grand, so plus 13094.15, right? And then we're just gonna copy our new cash flow and let's just go ahead and put zero right here. Zero is that student loan and now it's 2267.75. So let's go ahead and do it. So 2267.75, uh, 267.75. All right, so ba 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 ba. I think that's a key and peel skit. So 25 months to pay off that student loan. Again, it's a really cheap student loan. You probably go, get this kind of loan if you go to a community college, I think. In fact, I probably need to show a graph of one of the local community college where they they know like how cheap they are compared to like the the state schools and the private schools. It's like we're so cheap. It's like why wouldn't you? Everybody should go to community college. But again, sometimes low status. Our people are very status conscious, even though they don't get any bang for the buck for going to the prestigious schools. In fact, you ever hear those stories about how people work in like prestigious companies and then they end up dying because they overwork themselves? Like, if you type in Bank of America dead intern, it's really common. Or is it Bank of America? Or just one of those big banks, right? So, again, not to be somber, but what I'm saying is that well, human beings in general kind of do a lot for in exchange for status. It's kind of crazy. And sacrificing their own health. All right, so let's go back here. And how long does this take us? 25 months, 25 months. All right, so 25 months and it's 37K plus 15K. So that's, what is it, 52K? All right, 52K. And then now let's take a look at this. How long, 25, 25. So if 25 months had passed and we just did things the quote average American way, we'd still be at 12 grand, right? So. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And then now we're at this $288,000. Now take a look at this cash flow index. It's in the high 200s. What that means is that this debt is actually very, it takes up, we, we have a huge balance, but it takes up so little of our cash flow. So you could actually decide, okay, am I gonna invest in real estate or am I gonna pay off my mortgage? Either way is perfectly fine, but let's just fo assume that we're not gonna be a landlord, right? Because being a landlord is tough if you don't know what you're doing. And I don't even think I know what I'm doing, even though my tenant loves me, or at least I think my tenant loves me. <laughs> okay, so all right, sorry, let's go ahead and do this. And uh, here's the thing. When it comes to very high cash flow index loans, meaning the loan is very, quote, efficient, um, we don't. We definitely do not want to replace our, our mortgage with line of credit. Big mistake, right? I see this all the time on YouTube where it's like, replace your mortgage with the line of credit. And it's like you got a 4% line of uh, mortgage and then it's like a 10% line of credit. Here's the thing. I got my veloc trusty Velocity Banking calculator for this. So let me go ahead and open it up. There we go. There we got our Velocity Banking Calculator from Renatus, which is where I originally learned Velocity Banking from. So it's this cool thing where it calculates, okay, if you have a certain loan balance and you have a line of credit interest rate and you know calculates your income and expenses, how long is it going to take to pay off this uh, amortized loan? And so one of the things I just want to show with this is what happens if we decide blindly to replace our mortgage with the line of credit. So let's do this, 288.750.36, right? So that's the line of credit information, okay? And it says it's gonna take us 10.7 years and we only save $4,000 of interest. Isn't that crazy? $4,000 of interest. So it's like we accelerated the bank's payments and I, I don't know about you, but if I were the bank and I figured like I'm going to get my money 20 years sooner than I originally had anticipated and it's only going to cost me four grand, I'm like, yeah, sure, do this. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm going to be the one to lend you the line of credit. You do this strategy, replace your uh, um, mortgage with a 10% line of credit and, um, you know, 
Yeah, I don't mind losing four thousand dollars that I, ha I had originally anticipated, right? And if you take a look here, let's take a look here. So again, it gets transferred to the line of credit. You calculate it calculates the average daily balance, and then you know, let me actually zoom out a little bit, and you can see there. You, this is the the chunk amount, right? And then now all it is is just essentially. Um, Again, this calculator is smart, right? Like if you replace the mortgage, the line of credit, it knows how much, how long it's going to take and the pitfalls. And I don't, again, well, it's only for Renata students. And full full disclosure, reason I actually show this is to show the value that Renata has provided me because it's where I learned velocity banking. And um, f again, full disclosure, I actually sell their products as an independent contracted marketer, meaning I get commission for selling their stuff. Right. So uh, let me just kind of go in here. And chunk amount just means how much are you moving to the line of credit? Now, if you just do a small amount similar to, let's say, your income. So let's say six thousand dollars. Right. Bam. You see the difference. It makes seven point six years and forty eight grand interest uh, that you pay and you save about one hundred forty two grand potentially. Right. And so here's the thing that we have to understand that the interest calculated with a loan or a line of credit is almost the same. Right. It's almost the same. Like people don't understand. People think it's like calculated so different. It's actually not like it's actually mostly about the statement balance and the loan, which is technically the same as average daily balance. But the reason why we do this with a line of credit, one of the big reasons is to do it, which is to prevent something called a segregation of income and to actually put all your money to the debt. And if you do it with a small amount, like the interest rate, it affects it, but it really doesn't, right? But if we replace the whole thing, that's that's a no bueno, right? And actually, let me just, just realize that the higher you put the chunk amount, the more that you pay in interest. So let's do $10,000 and then 48. So let's see how much more we pay. Right. So we pay one one grand more, but it's not that much more. So at the, at there's going to be a certain point where you might want to do a big chunk just because you don't want to. Uh, it, it's more about convenience. Right. So think about like balance transfers, how you get charged based on like putting all this money. Not again, we're not I know I'm talking about apples and oranges here, but if you transfer money from like from a credit card to a zero percent balance transfer, they charge you for that. And it's just kind of like the same thing here. It's all about convenience, right? Hopefully that made sense. And if it doesn't, just ignore everything that I said. But what I'm saying is that you could just take a small amount, like $6,000, similar to your paycheck, and then just chunk it over and over again. And you could see 6000 10000 almost the same thing, right? It's all about your cash flow. So that's why I don't fear that 10%. But And here's a crazy thing. And here's what people don't realize. If I replace this mortgage with a 10% line of credit and I do $6,000 chunks with a 30% line of credit, the $6,000 chunks with a 30% line of credit is actually more optimal. I'm going to show you that right now. So 288, 750.36, right? So take a look at that. We only save $4,000 of interest and we pay it off in 10 years. Okay, now let's do $6,000, whoopsie, no. <laughs> $6,000 chunks and then we do 30% see how it's more optimal 7.8 years and we saved one hundred thirty four thousand dollars. people don't understand when chunking is appropriate versus replacing your mortgage line of credit and i would actually argue against first lien helocs unless you actually had the mortgage paid off so i would just chunk and then once that mortgage is paid up then i would apply for a first lien heloc and, and you know invest in real estate deals or you know do whatever it is except for whatever the bank wants you to do so they could be broke right but yeah so yeah here we go so let me just do 10 percent again and then 7.6 years so let's just go back to our um our spreadsheet right here so give me one second so seven seven point six years and the way that we calculate it is seven point six times uh, 12 plus 19, right? So that is 110 months. And then we divide that good stuff by 12, ignore the dollar sign. Uh, and that's 9.18 years, 9.18 years, um, 352K debt free, right? And here's the thing. This is why, like, 
I don't like three hundred thousand dollar mortgages because it's 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 deceiving because people only think about the monthly payment and as real estate investors you always i would always take on a lower purchase price and higher interest rate than the other way around but because we live in a monthly payment society people don't understand how harmful a higher purchase price is and we could probably if we had a lower purchase price but higher interest rate even uh, given the same payment we could pay this off quicker right i've, I've gone over that in, in a video a long time ago but i need to get it uh Go over it again. So, all right. So, 9.18 years. And what's our cash flow? $3,700. Oh, my goodness. And now we got, I guess, rich people problems. I don't know if it's really rich people. But, uh, you know, people, when they have savings, no debt, you know, it's like, I got to invest it. So, so it's lots of stuff you can have uh, or you can do when you're completely debt-free. And it's under 10 years, including your mortgage. Including, right? Like, people talking about, oh, pay off your mortgage in 10 years. No, no, no. We paid off all of our debt, including our mortgage under 10 years. And again, because we know how to maximize our cash flow. This is, well, at least for me, this is why I don't fear that 10% interest rate. But what do I need to fear it for, right? What I'm going to fear is something called the segregation of income. And I'm probably going to go over that in another video. And I have gone over that in other videos as well, but we always need a review, right? All right. Well, that's it for today. Just another Velocity Banking video. So... Again, you know, if people freak out about 10% interest rates, just agree with them and say, yeah, you're right, right? Because <laughs> that's what I do and just focus on your mission. All right, well, that's it for today. Again, uh, have a great day and we'll speak next time.